Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will first talk about the NADH pathway. So if one pathway is clear to you, then it will become easy to understand the other pathway also. So let us look at the NADH pathway. So let's see what happens. So when we are talking about NADH pathway, our starting material is going to be NADH2. So here we will see how the energy in NADH2 is utilized to synthesize ATP. Okay. So what happens here is NADH produced during Krebs cycle that was produced when I say during Krebs cycle I meant I mean all the steps till Krebs cycle so whatever NADH is produced till now it binds to complex one so where is my complex one this is complex one so it will bind to the first complex okay now electrons are transferred to coenzyme Q, that is ubiquinone, which is present between complex 1 and complex 3. So here you can see ubiquinone. So this electron will get transferred to this and this is a mobile carrier. So it will carry the electron to complex 3. So the electrons will be transferred to complex 3. So from there it will be picked up by cytochrome C, which is present on the outer side of the membrane as I said. Now this cytochrome C is again a mobile carrier and it will transfer the electron to complex 4. So now the electrons have reached complex 4. Now one simple question that might have struck your mind. From where are these electrons coming? Now the simple answer is the electrons are coming from NADH2. So when the NADH2 is broken, it breaks into NAD plus and H plus. Right? It forms NAD plus and H plus. So basically each NADH2 molecule will give two electrons and one hydrogen ion or proton to the, it, it will release these two things. Now when it releases all these things, the hydrogen ion will move out. As you can see here, the hydrogen ion will move out of this membrane. So if this is your inner membrane, this space is the intermembrane space. So hydrogen ions are moving out to the intermembrane space, but the two electrons are getting carried over through this chain. So the electrons are basically coming from NADH2. Now NADH2 being a high energy molecule, the electrons which are coming are also high energy electrons. And that is why it is moving down the potential gradient because it wants to attain lesser energy and more stability. So finally, the electrons are transferred to complex 4. Now what happens? Oxygen is present here and this oxygen is the final electron acceptor. So till now, none of the complexes were actually absorbing the electrons. They were just passing on the electrons to the next complex. But now oxygen will bind with the electron pair and with a proton which is present in the matrix to form water. So that is how oxygen will form water and now you don't have those electrons. Now if oxygen would have not been there, there would have been nobody to accept these electrons. In that case, there would have been too many electrons getting accumulated inside, right? And in that case, the proton gradient would have not been created. Now here, as this process takes place, what is happening? The electrons are getting transferred and finally getting accepted by oxygen to form water molecule. At the same time, this hydrogen ions at each step, because every time an NADH is coming, uh, to bind with complex 1, hydrogen ions are pushed into the intermembrane space. So that is how the concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space is increasing. There are too many hydrogen ions in this region when compared to the matrix. So as a result, a potential gradient is... So as a result of this entire movement of electrons in the NADH pathway, what happens is a proton gradient is developed. That is, the proton concentration in the intermembrane space increases as compared to the proton concentration in the matrix. And due to this development of proton gradient, ATP synthesis takes place. Now how ATP synthesis takes place that we will see a little later. So here let us quickly review the process how proton gradient develops. First is two electrons are transferred from NADH to complex 1. 
Now, as these electrons are transferred, coupled with this is the pumping of hydrogen ions from the matrix to the intermembrane space. So, as soon as the electrons are transferred to complex 1, hydrogen ions are also pumped into the intermembrane space. Now, these two electrons are then transferred through coenzyme Q to complex 3, then to cytochrome C and finally to complex 4. Thereafter, those electrons are taken in by the oxygen to form water. Now, due to the accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space, a proton gradient is developed and this proton gradient is responsible for the synthesis of ATP. So, this is about the NADH pathway. In a similar way, FADH2 pathway also works. The only difference is in the starting point. So, here what happens is there is no role of complex 1. So, complex 1 is not at all involved here. So, here complex 2 is involved. So, if you see, FADH2 is produced during the Krebs cycle, right? So, here from the Krebs cycle, FADH2 is produced and then it is passed on to this complex 2. So, if you look at the step 6 of the Krebs cycle, you can actually see complex 2. So complex 2 is present in the step 6 of Krebs cycle that is succinet dehydrogenase. So that is your complex 2. So from here it passes on to the coenzyme Q and then the same process follows. From coenzyme Q it moves on to complex 3. From complex 3 it is carried to cytochrome C. From cytochrome C it moves on to complex 4. So entire process remains the same just that in case of NADH pathway complex 1 is involved. In case of FADH2 pathway complex 2 2 is involved. So he, again once the electrons reach complex 4 the same thing will happen. Oxygen will come into picture. It will combine with the electron pair to form water molecule and as a result of this process hydrogen ions will get accumulated in the intermembrane space and as a result a proton gradient will be developed. So please understand how proton gradient is getting developed because that is the most important part here. So once the proton, proton gradient is developed, after that the ATP synthesis process is simple because in our previous lesson while we were talking about photosynthesis, we spoke about the chemiosmotic hypothesis. So based on that chemiosmotic hypothesis only, ATP gets synthesized. So the proton gradient development, when I say a proton gradient is developed, what I mean is this is the membrane which I am talking about, right? So outside this membrane that is in this intermembrane space, the concentration of the protons increases. So too many protons get accumulated here and as a result the concentration is very high in this space and the concentration is quite low in this space. So because of this proton gradient ATP synthesis will take place by chemiosmotic hypothesis. Now let us quickly see what is. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.